G'day, I'm Ray Toomes from New Zealand. Welcome to another Saturday Science Summary, a program about cycles and how they show up in different things. This is a painting that I did some years ago of a um, group of musicians playing uh, lo locally. That's the t subject of today's talk. Music. Uh, music is made of cycles. Um, everything we hear, everything everything we see are made of cycles. Light is, uh, is a cyclical phenomenon going like this. Uh, sound, same thing. Um, and uh, we can look at the different frequencies. And uh, music is very interesting in terms of the frequencies it's composed of. Uh, Pythagoras worked a lot of this out a long, 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 long time ago. Actually, Pythagoras didn't get it entirely right. Uh, he, he worked out that there were lots of proportions of two and three in music, uh, and that's perfectly correct. But um, it, it wasn't until the time of Galileo's father uh, that he worked out that um, Pythagoras had got one thing wrong. Pythagoras said that um, all the notes that if you keep going up by a ratio of 3 over 2, like like a C, if it was a 2, then a G would be a 3. Um, and uh, the next C would be um, twice the original C. But he, he'd got the one wrong, the, the E, um, the middle of the chord. He'd got that wrong, and it was Galileo's father who worked out that if C was 4, E would be 5 and G would be 6. Uh, and that's the... Uh, arrangement we see here on the piano keyboard. So how does that work? Let's have a wee look at a piano keyboard for a moment. This is a major chord, or well, we can put that one in as well. These ones have the frequency proportions 4, 5, 6, 8. If we take this 4, 5, 6, it's in a major chord. Uh, we can uh, look at it, a major chord that's one lower than that, F, A, C, that's also 4, 5, 6. And if we go up one higher, G, that's also 4, 5, 6. When we take together those uh, notes and those different ratios, we can get, if we get everything in the musical scale as present. Portions are 24, 27, 30, 32, 36, 40, 45, 48. Those proportions are called the just intonation scale, um, and they were worked it out in Galileo's father's time, uh, and um, they've been more or less accepted since. Um, although there was some debate at times about some of them, but in fact, um, that debate didn't really matter. There was sometimes a note has more than one meaning. Uh, we may get into that in this talk, I'm not sure. This is a, uh, a thing I used when I was working out a thing I called ARGI, Automatic Just Intonation. Um, it was an a, a invention that I had which would enable an electronic keyboard uh, to uh, play in um, uh, play perfect chords um, as you played through the, through a piece when you put notes together and so on. And uh, what it shows is that a frequency of 1, if 1C has a frequency of 1, one octave above has a frequency 2, um, the next G has a frequency 3, the second, the second octave above C is 4, and then E is 5, G is 6. 7's a little tricky and it's been put in light because uh, it's, it's sort of the... Um, it's the sort of the B flat, but it's not quite. Um, it's between. It falls down the crack a little bit. Um, and eight is the next C, and then D is an, is nine. E is ten. Again, eleven falls a little bit in a crack. Twelve is G. Thirteen falls in a crack. We get fourteen, fifteen, sixteen correctly, and seventeen and um, nineteen sort of work, and eighteen, twenty, twenty-one. From those, we can go back and calculate that. Uh, automatic just intonation scale that I told you. So what does that mean? It means that um, it's been found that the most pleasant sounds to the human ear are 
when uh, with when we play notes together are the ones that have simple whole number ratios to their frequency. Um, let's have a look at an example of that. What I've done here is I've put together three notes. One of them has a frequency of three, one of four and one of five. So we've got the red, the green and the blue. In actual fact, those colored lights uh, can have those frequencies three, four, five. And so we can make a major chord uh, in, uh, in music uh, from those different colors. But I've gone off the, off the track there. That's the frequencies that sounds pleasant because they all come back to the same place after a small number of cycles um, and uh, then they repeat. I found a book, An Introduction to the Study of Indian Music, written by an Englishman named E. Clements in 1912. Um, he studied how the Indians played music and how they moved around the different um, uh, the modulations and so on. And he worked out this whole arrangement of the relationships of the different notes uh, in frequency and what the frequencies were. Um, and uh, the Indians called it, I can't know how to pronounce them, pa, da, ni, sa, ri, ga, ma, pa, instead of do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. But when they modulated around, um, you don't always come back to the same place. And this was the tr tr thing that got uh, um, Pythagoras into trouble because he ended up, after he modulated around a lot of keys, he ended up back where he started, but he missed by a little bit. And it's called Pythagoras's comma. And it explains why it doesn't work. Uh, in Indian music, you've, you can modulate around, but uh, you will end up in a different place. And, that's, uh, and that actually is reflected in this diagram. And it shows uh, all the notes with the same and the same name, um, which can be ratios of two or octaves apart, uh, just represent one hexagon here. And uh, as we move to the right, we multiply the frequency by three or by three over two or by three over four, uh, because the divide by two and four are considered the same note. And so when you see the set of gray ones here, four in one row and three in the next, that represents the, the, the scale um, in a different key. And uh, we can see that um, three adjacent values represent that major chord, and then another three represent the major chord, and another three major chord, and together they make the scale as I showed you on the keyboard before. Uh, and they have all these movements. And then when you have a ratio of uh, five, you move diagonally up to the right. Or it'll probably be five over four, or maybe five over eight. Um, and when you have a ratio of seven, it moves out into the other little patch up at the right, um, which as I explained to you, uh, is one of the ones that falls a little bit in the cracks in, in our music. Now that's because we base on a system which um, was popularized in um, the time of Bach. Uh, it was called um, equi-tempered scale. Um, up till then, they tuned instruments for just one key. But they had problems because often music wanted to modulate a bit. And uh, when you move to a different key, it wanted to be a slightly different value. And we can see that in this diagram, but it's um, it was something that they couldn't really resolve. Uh, be so. What Bach and others did is they said, let's make all the intervals on the on the piano, say, um, exactly the same. And they, they become the twelfth root of two um, in frequency difference. And that that has a quality that it um, makes a lot of the things um, almost exactly right. And a couple of them a bit weirdly wrong, um, but it's a compromise. And it means you can play in all the different keys and they've all got the same things right and the same things wrong. Today, we're so used to that, uh, people think that is the correct tuning and uh, uh, they don't realize that it's actually a compromise system to make it work in all the keys. Uh, when people learn music, they are taught a thing which is called the theory of music. What they call the theory of music isn't really the theory of music, it's just a little bit below the surface of uh, what's happening in music. And they give n names to things, uh, strange names to them, which represent their position in the scale and such. Um, that's not really the theory of music. What, what I've showed you here, uh, the ratios of the frequencies of the notes, that's the real theory of music. And from that can be understood all the things that are going on 
Um, and I've discovered uh, when I was doing this RG chord ratio calculator and when I applied it to some pieces of real music uh, by the great composers like Mozart and Beethoven, uh, I discovered that uh, that there were things that they did in the music which um, I don't think anyone has really realised what they were doing when they actually played uh, extremely unusual ratio frequencies uh, notes uh, and had special meaning. And the chords that they played and the sequences they played actually made things that had that sort of eerie sound or very unusual sound, um, which uh, showed that at some level they understood very deeply what they were doing. And I'm not sure that many people do that today. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this little talk about music. It's a, a bit different to some of the other ones I've done. It's, it's, it's cycles, very much cycles. Music is all about cycles and the frequency ratios they have to each other. And this common ratios that are found of mostly two and three proportions, but sometimes other values, is exactly the same as what has been found in common cycles um, in everything that's been studied. Every single thing that's been studied that have records of over a period of time have been found to have cycles. And the, and the different common cycles found in different things uh, often have the same frequencies and in other things often have frequencies that are ratio, rate related to them by proportions of two and three. Um, and so it's the, um, the whole actual fabric of the universe um, is based on this um, and we don't necessarily see it around us but it's there at a deep level. This is underlying everything that happens in the universe. So I hope you've enjoyed this little dive into the depths of music theory um, that you probably won't see somewhere else, but it, it doesn't mean it's wrong. Uh, it just means other people um, didn't take such a deep breath before they went down. So I hope you've enjoyed, um, and I forgot to tell you to take a deep breath, but next time you can do that. And maybe um, we'll see you again sometime. Have fun.